A dream has been revealed. Alone in a crowd of rugged men nursing his drink in the far corner of the old post town's only tavern, Time. A single man strides in through the tavern door, massively built. He wears the garb of a warrior. The soul uniform bespeaks a long journey. Fatigue marks his face, but his eyes wear a penetrating gleam. The look of a fighting man on active duty. A hero's return. The tavern's din hushes instantly. Every drunken eye in the place fastens on the soldier with awe and gratitude. The long war with the neighboring country has ended at last, and the men who fought on the front lines are returning to their homes. So it is with this military man. The soldier takes a seat at the table next to Kimes and downs a slug of liquor with the forcefulness of the hard drinker, a man who drinks to kill his pain. Two cups, three, four... Another customer approaches him, bottle in hand, wearing an ingratiating grin. Typical crafty town punk. Let me offer you a drink, wheedles the man. As a token of gratitude for your heroic efforts on behalf of the fatherland. Soldier on smiley allows the man to fill his cup. How was it at the front? I'm sure you performed many valiant deeds on the battlefield. Soldier empties his cup in silence. The punk refills the cup and adopts an even more fawning smile. Now that we're friends, how about telling me some more tales? Not some big, strong arms. How many enemy soldiers did you kill? Without a word, the soldier hurls the contents of his cup into the man's face. The punk flies into a rage and, rage and draws his knife. No sooner does it leave its sheath than Kaim's fist sends it flying through the air. Faced with the powerful united front of Kaim and the soldier, the punk runs out, muttering curses. Two big men watch him go, and share a faint smile. Time doesn't have to speak with the soldier to know that he lives in deep sadness. For his part, the soldier, having cheated death any number of times, is aware of the shadow that lurks in Kaim's expression. The tavern's din returns. Kaim and the soldier pour each other drinks. I've got a wife and daughter I haven't seen since I shipped out. Been three long years. He lets himself smile shyly now for the first time as he takes a photograph of his wife and daughter from his pocket and shows it to Kaim. The wife, a woman of dewy freshness, the daughter still very young. They're the reasons I survived. The thought of going home to them alive was all that sustained me in battle. Is your heart home far from here? No, my village is just over the next pass. I'm sure they've heard the news that the war is over and can hardly wait to have me home. You could get there tonight if you wanted to badly enough. It was that close. But... I told you dines a mouthful of liquor and groans. I'm afraid. Afraid of what? I want to see my wife and, wife and daughter, but I'm afraid to have them see me. I don't know how many men I've killed these past three years. I had no choice. I had to do it to stay alive. I was going to get back to my family. I had no choice but to kill one enemy soldier after another. Each and every one of those men had families they had left at home. It was the code of war, the soldier's destiny. Stay alive in battle. You had to go on killing men before they could kill you. I had no time to think about such things at the front. I was too busy trying to survive. I see it now, though. Now that the war is over, three years of sin are carved into my face. This face of a killer. I want to show this face to my wife and daughter. The soldier pulls out a leather pouch from which he withdraws a small stone. He tells Kaim it is an unpolished gemstone something he found shortly after he left for the battlefield. Gemstone? The stone on the table is a dull black without a hint of gleam. Gem should have. It sparkled when I first found it. I was sure my daughter would love it when I brought it home to her. 
Gradually, though, the stone lost its gleam, turned cloudy. Every time I killed an enemy soldier, something like the stain of his blood would rise to the surface of the stone. As you can see, it's all solid black now. Years. Stone is stained by the sins I've committed. I call my sin stone. You don't have to blame yourself, so you had to do it to stay alive. I know that. I know. But still, just like me, the man I killed had villages to go home to. Families waiting for them there. The soldier then says to Kain, and you too, I suppose. You must have a family. Kain gives his head a little shake. Not me. No family. A home village at least. I don't have any place to go home to. Huh. Internal traveler then. Huh. That's me. The soldier chuckles softly and gives Kaim a sour smile. Hard to tell how fully he believes what Kaim has told him. He slips the sin stone into a leather pouch and says, You know what I think? If the stone turned darker every time I took a life, I ought to get some of its gleam back every time I save a life. Instead of answering, Kaim drains the last drops of liquor from his cup and rises from the table. The soldier remains in his chair, and Kaim, staring down at him, offers him these words of advice. You have a place you can go home to, and you should go to it. Just go. No matter how much guilt you may have weighing you down, I'm sure your wife and daughter will understand. You're no criminal. You're a hero. You fought your heart out to stay alive. <laughs> I'm glad I met you. I needed to hear that. He holds his right hand out to Kaim, who grasps it in return. I hope your travels go well. And your travels will soon be over, replied Kaim with a smile, starting for the door. Just then, the punk charges at Kaim from behind, wielding a pistol. Watch out! Well, as the soldier and rushes after Kaim. Kaim whirls around, the punk takes the aim and shouts, You can't treat me like that, you son of a bitch! The soldier flies between the two men and takes a bullet in the gut. And so, as he so desperately wished to do, the soldier saved someone's life. Ironically, it is for the life of Kaim, a man who can neither age nor die. For that, the soldier traded his one and only life. Crawled on the floor, nearly unconscious, the soldier thrusts the leather pouch into Kaim's hand. Now look at my sinstone, will you? Maybe... <laughs> maybe some of its shine has come back. Blood spurts from his mouth, strangling the laugh. Kaim looks inside the bag and says, It's sparkling now. It's clean. It is? Good. Good. My daughter will be glad. He smiles with satisfaction and holds his hand out for the pouch. Gently, Kaim lays the pouch on the palm of his hand, holds the man's fingers over it. The soldier draws his last breath, and the pouch falls to the floor. The dead man's face wears a peaceful expression. The stone, however, the man's sin stone, is rolled from the open pouch. It's as black as ever. <laughs>